I'm Wes, and this is John, and we built a guitar, and this is it, and I guess two years ago, yeah, that's when we really started cutting wood, and I got a call, I got an email from my friend Danny Loner, uh, saying that Mike Tempesta was trying to get in touch with me, and basically, um, said, Mike's working for Yamaha, and he wants to give you a guitar to try, and I was um, skeptical at first, because Yamaha, to me, have never known anything about the company, and just seemed like, I don't know, like, running into Pacificas and stuff like that, and, and uh, I just have never picked one up before, and I thought it was going to be kind of lame, but it ended up being really, really great. When Mike asked me to do a signature model, I think I immediately said no, just like out of like knee jerk reaction, just like no, no, I'm not doing that. And um, then I just thought about it for a little while and went, well, I'll just ask. It couldn't hurt to ask. And I said, can I just do it from the ground up? And they said, yeah. And that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So we got together and. Um, they had a bunch of drawings, and I had one drawing, because I had been thinking about it kind of secretly for a long time. I had been thinking about doing a signature guitar, but kind of had it hidden away, didn't talk to people about it, because I kind of thought it was, I don't know, it was sort of like a guilty pleasure to think about, and I was ready to go. And also, I was really into this artist, uh, well, actually an architect, uh, from the Art Nouveau movement called Hector Gamard, and he's the guy that designed all the metro stations in Paris that are um, really loopy and weird, and um, I kind of wanted the whole guitar to kind of have, a, have an Art Nouveau look to it a little bit too. So that's why it's sort of stretched and pulled, and um, yeah, the heads, everything's kind of swept, like as if you took the guitar and yanked it like that. Jackie Minakuchi from Yamaha Japan. Um, he is from Yamaha Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I figured. That, but, um, he happened to design this um, quick release. Uh, locking tremolo system that pinches the strings um, instead of pressing them down so you never need an Allen wrench to undo it. Um, and this was coincidence that the guitar headstock had room for this to kind of aesthetically fit in. I mean, any guitar could probably have this on it and this wouldn't get in the way. But it just it, it was kind of fate and it made sense. You know, the Jackie, who's like a real high up engineer in Japan and been coming up with this and you know I know that at one point we're going to put like a vintage just regular like a PRS type trim on it and then it was kind of a way to see if that would work on this and you know kind of give him some excitement on the project over there too like wow they, they might try one with this trim I designed and yeah it, and it fit perfectly and it worked great and I mean, I prefer Floyd Roses anyway because I like to, you know, make the strings dangle. And with like, as far as like whammy bar use, it's it's great. It does it does that that thing and the yeah. To me, I mean, I'd love to say that we took some kind of credit for it, but really, it was his whole thing. And basically, all we did was get it. But you wanted to put into a German cab. carve. Yeah, just because manufacturing-wise too, even though it looks cool, it's it's kind of a little easier thing to yeah. have happen here, and it also gives you some definition. But you know, it kind of works. There's a lot of different aspects of different styles of guitar built. A version you did by laying this on top. This might have been the second one you did that time, maybe, and then you said, "Fuck okay, it, why can't we just use that?" You know? Yeah. Or that's got to be pretty close. There was to another. Yeah, I have the original somewhere. I think the original but you just brought in. Yeah, like I brought it. I'm thinking. These I don't look, think I have it though. These look a lot like. Yeah, these are the ones we did off the. Yeah, because yeah, they were, were all things just like. Trying this to is the second at Yamaha. Like, hey, how? Would, what if the horn was this way? What if the? And then yeah. You, it was a unique project for Yamaha. 
and you know kind of created some of the time frame stuff that it was nothing was existing and I know a lot of companies probably other companies you dealt with too are kind of like well here's our strat here's our telly can we do something with you know from the it's actually a pretty long ten and a lot like the late 50s guitars that are real collectible nowadays it's not just like a glued in bolt on and you know, the neck goes all the way to the end of the pickup route and it's it's in there everything just sounds better to me like all the time I just end up going oh this guitar I mean especially hollow bodies like I, I've been playing hollow bodies for so long, and everybody just goes, "I thought you were like the seven string dude," and it was like, "Yeah, but that was, you know, the last time I might have been in print, I was the seven string guy." But I've continued to live a life since then and gotten really into, you know, six string guitars and vintage guitars and and hollow bodies, semi hollow bodies, because um, don't you have feedback problems with those? No, I have no feedback problems at all with semi hollow bodies. I don't know what everyone else is doing, but I don't have any trouble with them. I think that they probably their pickups are haywire and they need to get those under control. But um yeah, these pickups don't feedback a lot. The semi hollow body makes the guitar really resonant and it makes it more alive. It it go uh, it just makes for a, a guitar that um, is, you know, there's something, there's something about having chambers in a guitar that just makes it, the sound better. So here's what we got on the inside. I think a big reason why there's not a problem with feedback is You've got these areas that are pretty hollow. You've got this center block that basically is solid. You know, it has the trim so you get a little relief right here. This takes a little bit of the weight out, but it doesn't screw with the conductivity of the neck being glued in and this being a straight line in with the bridge. And then also on the top, this hollowed out kind of like a violin would be, but it still has this center region which mates perfectly with that, so it makes a hole solid center. A lot of hollow guitars these days, you know, like I mean, older 335s, which are great, have their own sound and stuff, but it's a solid core, and then it's got some risers for the back and the top to sit on, so you, you've got a lot of things that can also, they resonate, but they also soak up vibrations, and it's just, it's just a different thing. It has a lot of qualities that a solid body guitar has, but that acoustic property that a true hollow body would have too. One other thing is the top is actually carved. It's not a pressed top, so it it moves as one piece and it breathes. But I think we were even talking to you about this is that we needed to go at it from the direction of how are they going to manufacture this? Sure. Not just hey, we can make this great guitar here and make right. something crazy. So. We actually did a CNC program here and ran it on a CNC. So when it was time and to deal with the factory, and that was a you know a big step to overcome. Absolutely. And I knew it was going to be from the get go, mm -hmm. just from dealing with projects that were just very just, that would seem very simple. I mean, this was. But that's why we worked from the computer. Yeah, the computer. that's what I'm getting at. Just kept the software integrated with the, the yeah, project. Yeah, just like time. here, it's possible. It's it's the neck from that big the big white one. What is that? Day? The AES. AES 1500. Yeah. Yeah, he, it was that and the SA 2200. Did they're similar next? Yeah. Yeah. Like right, right now, 